using a sub report is a great way of effectively adding two lots of totally unrelated information onto the same report. So we need to look at how to create some data that would act as a sub report and then pull that into our new report, but not being linked either to the reports data or to the other sub reports data, probably best seen in action. So if we take the data report and we also have the product report both in your working folder. And what I want to do is take the data report, which currently when you preview it reports on 349,000 people. But what we could do is we could create a little summary report based on when these people have made their last sale. So let's go to the group expert based on the last sale date, grouped by not each week, but each month. Okay, okay. That gives me a month grouping. I'd then like to summarize the last sale value. So right click, insert summary, and we'll sum the last sale value into the group one. And because we want to use this report as a summary report, we'll go into design, we'll hide, Let's actually suppress the details because we don't even want to drill down. Move that value into here. Change that label to month. That says last sale value. Let's change that to total sales. And let's delete the other labels. So when we preview the report now, we have in effect a summary report, not wide enough field. That displays month. Just make the labels a little bit bigger. And their total sales value. We're not interested in the group footer either, so let's suppress that, make it a nice little tight report. And then if we copy that formula that's doing the summing and paste it into the report footer, we'll have a grand total of 17,508 million. Quite a good sales. So let's save this. Save as data report summary. Now, what I tend to do is if I know I'm going to use this report as a sub report, I'll prefix it with sub so that when I'm looking for it or looking to use it, I know which is the report I've already set up to be used as a sub report. So that saves that's a nice little small report that will look nice on a main report. And we can do a similar thing for the product report. This lists all of our products quantity, price etc. And we can create ourselves a little summary report based on the product data, perhaps based on their item weight. So we'll go to the group expert based on the weight. Okay. Then we'd like to effectively add up how many items we have. Let's right click insert summary. And then just the same as we did before, we'll suppress the detail, move the some of the quantity into the group header. And then in design, we can do a little bit of tightening up, such as suppressing the group footer, move that alongside there, change the labels again. So wait. Stock. Lose these labels. And we have a nice little group report there, which we can do a save as. Again, I'm going to prefix that with sub, just so I know that I'm going to use it as a sub report. So sub product report by weight and save. And then what I need is a brand new report. So it's file, new blank report. I'm not actually going to connect it to any data. So we'll click cancel on the data expert. And I will then want to bring in my two sub reports. So I want them on the front page. So I'm going to bring them into the report header. So just make a little bit of room. And then choose the insert sub report tool. Choose an existing report. Uh, yes, please browse the data report summary. No need to choose the link option because there's no master data to link to. Okay, one click. And you notice the width of it is driven by the page width of the sub report, but it doesn't actually need to be that wide. And then if I preview, I'll see if that works. So we can see that once it's read the data, it brings in the sub report with his data in. So I want the other one to go next to it. So it's again, insert sub report, choose an existing report. You can use the wizard here to create yourselves a sub report based on the data, but we're going to add one of our own. So by weight, 
Okay. One click. And again, preview. Refresh all the data. Yes. And you can see the other sub report. Now you'll see that when you insert sub reports into what effectively is here a main report, you get the design tab where you can see the rectangle. You get preview where you can see the data. And you also get a tab that shows you the design of each of the sub reports that you've brought in. So you can see that because we've narrowed up its view, it doesn't need these bits. And we're not using them anyway, so we could get rid of them. And the same for the other summary. Let's just remove them out of the way. So that doesn't affect the preview at all. Now you'll notice that in design, I made this area big for the sub reports, but I don't actually need to because you can see that that area has just filled itself. If I go back into design, I don't need to make space up. I can leave that as it is, and in preview, you'll see that it will grow to fit. So the sub report will push the boundaries of the area that it's placed in, whether that's the detail section, whether that's report header or the report footer, or even a group header and footer, to then expand and display everything. Now you will notice that here in my sub report, when I created that report, it has a header of month and total sales. When we look at it here as a sub report, it doesn't have that header. The reason for that is if you look back at the data report, we've placed these headers in what's classed as the page header. Well, when it's a sub report, it doesn't have a page header because it's not paginated as such. It's just part of another report that has its own page headers and footers. So if you need labels, to be appear in your sub report, you need to move them into the report header or one of the group headers. If we look at the embedded copy here, you'll find that we no longer have page headers and footers, so effectively we've lost them. So we need to go back to our data report here in design, move these two labels up into the report header. Now, if you do a lot of sub reports, you'll know that you can't use the page headers and footers. So let's save that, and the same with the product report. Move its labels up into the report header and again save that and come back to report three. Now things aren't automatically updated when you change a sub report back at its source because effectively it has to be re imported. So we go back to our little sub reports rectangle there, right click and we can re import the sub report. This cannot be undone, that's okay, we'll continue. And it brings back the sub report again, so effectively it's the same as deleting and reinserting it. But the advantage is you've already got it in the right position. And hey presto, our labels up here. We need to do the same with the second sub report, re import the sub report, and then its labels appear. So you can create a sub report from any amount of data that you like. They're usually quite good here for summaries or sub data, bearing in mind that anything you place in a page header or footer will not come through as part of the sub report. And the layout of that sub report can be amended when you're in a sub report. These two subreports are classed as unlinked subreports because they're not related to the data in the main report. We also need to look at using linked subreports where the subreport is effectively filtered by the main report.